Hello, teachers, parents, and educational leaders, and welcome to this episode of Breaking Down the Best. Now, during this episode, you will get a peek into the members-only area where I have tons of resources to help you make math fun, make it click, and make it stick. There should be a link somewhere around this video where you can learn more. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's get to it, and let's break down the standard. Welcome to Breaking Down the Best, a video series dedicated to breaking down Florida's best standards for math. So grab something to write with and maybe even a snack. This looks good. And don't forget to put a smile on your face. There you go. I see you. And let's dive into today's best standard. Hey, hey, everyone. My name is Sarah McCarthy, and I'm so excited that you are joining me as we break down the following standard. Today's standard is MA.5.DP. That stands for Data Analysis and Probability.1.1. And this standard says to collect and represent numerical data, that means data with numbers, including fractional and decimal values because fractions and decimals are both numbers using tables, line graphs, and line plots. All right, here's an example. It says that Gloria is keeping track of her money every week. She starts with $10. After one week, she has $7.50. After two weeks, she has $12, and after three weeks, she has $6.25. Represent the amount of money she has using a line graph. So this right over here is kind of what a line graph looks like, where we're starting at $10, going down to seven. This is very quick, but you can see the up and down that we're having going on there. Um, we also, this is a great way to showcase the use of decimals using a line graph. So we'll go more into detail on what these line graphs look like, but before we go any further, I just want to let you know that this document that I'm marking up all over is not something that I have created. This is something that the Florida Department of Education releases to the public, and in these Breaking Down the Best episodes, I'm just showing you my process for breaking down the standard and kind of going over the important points that we need to consider as we're teaching the standard. And then we will go and explore the website, McCarthyMathAcademy.com, where we will see what resources that you have available with your taking on the best membership for this particular standard today, 5.dp.1.1. So let's go ahead and continue. Okay, some benchmark clarifications say that within this benchmark, the expectation is for an estimation of the fractions and decimal heights on a line graph. You can see over here, this was indeed an estimation. We're looking for more of an estimation than that. I'll show you what I mean in just a little bit, but we're looking for reasonable placement. Hopefully I'll remember to point that out once we get to some examples of line graphs. Um, here for a clarification too, it says decimal values are limited to the hundreds and that denominators are limited to one, two, three, and four. Be careful with this because in a minute, there's an example that they provide that goes outside of that. So just be careful. Also fractions can be greater than one. Some related benchmarks to this one would be ma.5.nso.2. 1.4, that is our plotting, ordering, and comparing decimals, numbers with decimals standard. We also have 5.ar.1.2, that is adding, subtracting, multiplying, woo, fractions and mixed numbers in the real world. Also we have gr.4.1, talks about coordinate planes, like the basics of them, and then 4.2, we bump it up a little bit and it's coordinate planes in the real world. That's because line graphs are very similar to coordinate planes. Some words that you need to know are line graphs, which we will explore, they look kind of like this, and line plots, which you should be familiar with, and if not, don't worry, because I've got your back there. Where are they coming from in fourth grade? Well, we have 4.dp.1.1, and that is the represent data with stem and leaf plots, which we're not doing in fourth grade, but there is that vertical alignment to line plots there. Then in sixth grade, they will move on to box plots and histograms. For the purpose and instructional strategy section, let's just point out some things that jumped out at me. It says that the purpose of this benchmark is to collect and display authentic numerical data in tables, line graphs, or line plots, including fractional and decimal values. 
It's important that with line graphs that students develop the understanding that values in this graph often represent data that changes over time. We should identify the meaning of the points um, and also that both axes are labeled correctly. Both axes? I don't know if I said that right. <laughs> All right, for common misconceptions, this says for line plots, students may misread a number line and have difficulty because they use whole number names when counting fractional parts. I think that's true. I would say the biggest piece of this is just not, they might not understand what the purpose of a line plot is and how to read it and interpret the information on a line plot. Um, also messing up the fractions that are there too. Like if it's broken into quarters, fourths, let's say that you're given one fourth, one half, and three fourths, maybe not understanding where that one fourth and one half goes is kind of what I've experienced with this. So just something to keep in mind there. Um, another thing too is not marking the data. Like if you're, if you're given information in a table and then you have to place it onto a line plot, not marking it correctly and tracking your line plot as you're creating it and making a mistake there. Okay, for some instructional tasks, you can take a look at these so you can see what they look like in action. Um, something that I noticed was that this looks like a multi-select problem, but it's not. We have to create a line plot using these values, but also remember that I said that there's going to be an example that goes beyond the denominator limits. Um, halves and fourths are fine, but the but this standard did say that something like eighths, I'm curious as to why that's there because if you go back up to right here where the denominator limits are, having eighths goes beyond that denominator limit. So just be careful with that. All right, and then here, questions like what's the approximate change is a great question to ask between what's happening, whether they were going increasing Looks like we're increasing over time with this line graph. But this is what a line graph looks like. And as you can see, um, these could be, these are approximate values right there. So if this is 80, then this right here might be 100. And so halfway in between might be 90, right? I think that does it for going over the standard. Now let's go ahead and hop over to the website and see what you have access to with your Taking on the Best membership. All right, so here we are on the website. First, we're going to click Members Enter here. Select Taking on the Best, and you might need to log in. Then we're gonna click on Fifth Grade. Scroll down to the DP strand for data analysis and probability. And there's only two, stra two standards for this strand. We're gonna go with this one today. That's ma.5.dp.1.1. And the very first page that opens up are your bronze resources with your video lessons and your printable student guides. So you can see we've got one, two video lessons today. The first one is focusing on tables and line plots. The second one is focusing on collecting and representing data with tables and line graphs. We'll take a closer look at those printables in just a second, but just know that the, the same printable is being used in the video. So all students have to do is watch the video and take down the notes as we're going over it. The purpose of these videos is to make it fun and to make it click. The expectation should not be that students master the content after watching one video. In order to master the skill, the skills that are required within the standard, it's really important that students get that extra practice in, and that's why there is the silver plan, which we'll go over in just a second. But if you're like, wait, how do you even do a line plot or a line graph? You can absolutely just click play and you can watch the lessons in order to learn um, what the expectations are of the standard, okay? Let's go down to the silver plan though so we can see all of it, the all the printables, including the extra practice. Okay, so we're gonna click right here for your silver printables. So the first one that opens up is your video lesson that we saw on the bronze page. So it says, Matthew measures the lengths of 14 boards of wood, which he measured to the nearest quarter inch. He tracks his data in the table below, represent Matthew's data in the line plot. Then answer a few questions about the data. So you're taking all these numbers, all these amounts off of the table and placing them onto the line plot. Again, we were saying that some common mistakes that students make is that they forget to track it as they go. And they also might not label these or understand what the fractional pieces are. So that's kind of where they get tripped up. So just be aware of that. The questions say, what is 
Describe what each x of your line plot represents, and what is the sum of the two second greatest wooden boards? So after you've plotted it, you can just add up the two second greatest. So next, there's another video lesson for the line graph. So this is what a line graph would look like. You can see here that we've got some rainfall, and we need to take this information off the data, and for day one, place the point where it goes. Obviously, because it is a decimal value and we have whole numbers here, we're just placing it approximately where it goes, just like the standard says. Number, then there's a couple questions. What is the change in rainfall in inches from day one to day two? And what is the change in rainfall in inches from day four to day five? So after you graph it, you can go ahead and answer those questions. And this is the video lesson. So we're answering all of these together and students can take notes as they're watching. The next one is the extra practice where students can try it on their own. Now we're talking about money. There's a different scale over here. So counting by 25s and then just estimating where the, where the points would go. This one says, how much more money did Emily earn on her highest earning day compared to her lowest earning day? And between which two days was the greatest change in earnings? So after they graph it, they'll be able to see which one had the greatest increase or decrease. Then there is a math mission where we're kind of tying this all together. So here it says that Nevea commits to a push-up challenge. The challenge is to complete as many push-ups in 60 seconds over the next week. Nevea tracks her results in the table below. Decide whether a line graph or a line plot would be more appropriate to display this data. Then create it. So we're using this data right here and deciding which one would make more sense to do and then answering these questions right here. So this is a great way for students to kind of combine it all together to form their own uh, way of representing the data, whether it's a line plot or a line graph. And then here, the final activity is another video. It's called Math Misconception Mystery. That is a video right here. You just click play and I will guide you in the video through the whole process of it. First, I will just instruct students to solve this on their own, whether it's individually or with a small group. It says a bicycle company tracks how many bicycles they sold each month, as shown on the table below. Represent their data on the line graph. So students can go ahead and solve that here. And then after they solve it, they'll press play to continue the video, where they will witness four characters solve the same problem. Three of these characters are going to make a mistake that students commonly make and only one character solves it correctly. And yes, these characters are just me dressed up in silly costumes with silly accents trying to make it fun for them and to pull them into it. So these are a big hit with students. Once you start these math misconception mystery episodes, which there's one for every single standard. So once you start these, your students, I promise you, are going to beg you for more. And just one word of advice is to, I would not recommend showing these at the very beginning of a, of a unit after they've had some time to master it. Um, maybe before a test would be a great way to review and have fun with this. Um, and then after they watch the video, they can fill out this detective report stating who the most reasonable answer belongs to and evaluating the work of the other three characters. So that is that one. All right, so that's the bronze and the silver. If you have the gold plan, you have everything that we've gone over so far, including some more, including a mini assessment. There's a mini assessment for each standard, and it's typically about four to five questions, just depending on the standard. You can see here, we've got a variety of question types. This might be kind of like a drag and drop on a computer test, but really we're just using paper and pencil here. To represent the data using a line plot, the first one has been provided for you. Here's 54, and there's 54. Now they're gonna have to fill in the fractions there. Just giving you a peek of what's going on with this. You can see we've got the line plots, we have fractions, we have decimals, we have line graphs, all of that, okay? There's also an answer key for this right here. As a gold member, you also have these episodes, these breaking down the best episodes right here, just clicks away from all the resources that we're talking about. So it's a nice little perk of having these videos right here. You can also find these videos on YouTube. They just contain ads. So it's a nice little perk of you being a gold member is having it right there. But really the biggest highlight of the gold plan is McCarthy Math 155. Um, it's a daily math intervention that's aligned to the Common Core standards. I know it says Common Core, 
and I know that we're in the best standards, but I had a lot of principals and teachers ask me if I could include this in a package. So this is where it is. Let's click on this one. So McCarthy, so the 155 stands for 155 videos for each grade level. I'm going to click on fifth grade and you can see all of the units. So I'm letting you know right now that there, uh, oh, we do have line plots. Okay, so there are line plots here, but we do not have anything for line graphs in McCarthy Math 155. So if you have students struggling how to put fractions on a line or how to read line plots, answering basic questions about them, if they need some more practice, you can absolutely utilize these video lessons. They're just not specifically aligned to the standard that we have. You can also, so there are definitely um, videos that you can pull from Unit 8, but just note, like, look here, there's, do you have students struggling with volume or coordinate planes? Or how about operations, adding, subtracting, multiplying operations with decimals and fractions and all of that. So you can see there's a lot here that you can use. All right, and I think that's it for going over everything. I hope that you found this video to be helpful. And before you go, I just wanna remind you that what you choose to wake up and do with your life every day really matters. Thank you for inviting me into your educational space. I know that you have so much going on and probably a lot of things to do. I respect your time, so I will see you in another episode real soon. Hey. Bye. Okay, so I know that I just said goodbye for now, but I'm going to ask you to do one more thing, okay? If you enjoyed this episode, please consider sharing it with your teacher friends or other leaders in education. That's how I get to continue doing what I love to do, which of course is supporting you all to the best <laughs> of my ability. All right, for real now. Bye.